So good morning. Um, first, I would like to thank the opportunity to present a talk about marine pollution. And the main question that um, this talk is going to be about, it's about what are we doing to our water, one of our most precious resources in the planet. And I've chosen to start with this photo. It's in, in Hawaii. Um, because um, when we see a beach, we immediately uh, start thinking of a peaceful and relaxing time. And these feelings come to us when we see photos like this. This photo in Hawaii was chosen on purpose um, because the archipelago is located in one of the five known gyres, which are conversion zones for plastic accumulation. And my talk is going to be about plastic accumulation and the effects and impacts of plastics. So, um, it's not only in the United States that the, that sort of scenario happens. It also happens here in Portugal due to our location and to our extensive coastline. Um, in, in Hawaii, uh, work conducted by Captain Charles Moore in 1998 identified six times more plastic than plank, uh, six times more plastic than plankton. And in just 10 years, this ratio went up to 36 more plastic than plankton. Plankton is the foundation of the food chain. So it's what animals depend on. And by, by the plastics that we see here and that accumulate also in, in, in our country, uh, we have been uh, identifying that 90% of the marine litter is actually plastic. And 80% of all the debris provide from land sources, which is another way to say from us. Um, in a project conducted in Portugal, we have been identifying um, plastic accumulation zones, but also pollutants absorbed to, to plastics and the effects of the ingestion of microplastics. Plastics such as this, and such as this. This is a sample on a beach, and you can see here this tiny sphere-shaped plastics. They are called pellets. They are the raw material to produce all the objects that we use in our daily lives. Um, and in the last three years, we have collected 70,000 of them. And 45,000 of these have um, dimensions below five millimeters in diameter. So here start the microplastics. And they cause problems such as this. Death by ingestion. Um, coastal birds start to to, to have uh, they die from starvation because their stomaches are full of plastic, and this is one of the impacts from our daily uses. And the second is the entanglement, as animals get trapped in fishing nets or in six-pack rings. And this is happening. And if you go and look in the literature, you'll find many and many examples of this. This. Photos that I'm going to show you now are um, some photos that were of some samples we've collected in zooplankton um, samples surveyed in Portuguese coastal waters. And what we have identified is, in this case, pellet, tiny one, um, as you can see through the scale, but also nylon, styrofoam, more styrofoam with pieces of polypropylene. We know because we have identified in a partnership we have with the Department of Conservation and Restoration from this faculty. Um, another study about the ingestion, and you can see in this photo, um, this is the gut cavity of uh, a mussel. So if we want to compare it to us, it's more or less like our stomach. And we have been um, identifying that if we feed them with uh, plastics, they are going to stuck in their um, gut cavities. And what we see here are tiny pieces of plastic, of polystyrene, 10 micrometers uh, in diameter, that I will put it with fluorescence so you can see better the, the tiny particles that are stuck in the muscles. So this is um, a real problem that happens from degradation of the plastics in the ocean. Another problem which is also documented is this, plastic may act as a substract for new species or for species to attach. And in, in this photo, we have the example of barnacles who are attached to a plastic cup. This might be a vector of invasive species, as plastic is light and easily floats in the ocean currents and can travel great distances. So we don't know if this will act as a vector, as a vector for species to be transported from one continent to another. Here is another example. So I've been talking a little bit about um, all the impacts 
from plastics that we have and are documented. This is not science, science fiction. This is some things that are truly happening. And this comes to the point of, of the talk. I wanted to show you something that I'm pretty sure you've all seen and that some of you might know by heart, especially if you study in this, in this field, which is this 3R politics. So everyone knows at least a little bit about recycling because we do the separation and we have to take our trash to the, to the bin. That's why we know that one. But usually we don't know or we don't remember that we need to reduce our consumption and reuse our packages. And it's very important to reduce the amounts of plastic that we are consuming on a daily basis. I think we should not stay only with these three. I think we should go two steps further. I really believe that we sh should start refusing plastics, refusing plastics in our daily lives. This means every time we go to the supermarket or to our local grocery store, we refuse to, to bring more plastics into our houses. And also rethink, rethink our lifestyle. Do we really need all the things that advertisement tells us? Is it really that important? For instance, if I want to look pretty, as advertisement tells me, I should scrub my face with an exfoliant. But all the exfoliants available on market today, they have microplastics in it. So what is the impact of a simple thing as becoming more beautiful in an advertisement point of view? And this is why I really should think I really believe that we should rethink our lifestyle, because our lifestyle must be more sustainable. Um, according to this, we are now um, um, on a project which is called Marlisco, and Marlisco is an FP7 uh, European project um, to which this faculty is partner in Europe. And what we are doing is awareness and co-responsibility so that people can make better and safer choices. Um, this project works with all the stakeholders involved, with industrial, with um, legislation, uh, local authorities, European authorities, with beachgoers, with surfers, with the fishermen, with everyone who is involved. And we try to aware people and so that they can make better choices. What we see here is one of the campaigns where we've been in a supermarket handling reusable bags to people made out of fabric. And this sort of small activities make people actually think what they are doing with their daily life. I would really like to finish uh, with a quote of someone that I truly, truly admire, which is Captain Jacques-Yves Cousteau, and I believe that you all know of him. And it says, the sea, the great unifier, is man's only hope. Now as never before, the old phrase has a literal meaning, we're all in the same boat. And because we're all in the same boat, it's not only responsibility of waste management, of European or local um, authorities or legislation, it's not only uh, it's also uh, important that we have best available techniques on the industry, but it must start with us. We are also responsible, and we must think what we want to, um, on, a sustain on a sustainable development concept, what we want to achieve for the next generations, for the future generations. And it's our responsibility as well to make safer and better choices every day. Thank you very much.